Welcome back guys, continuing the Tyrannus series playlist. Uh, so far I've given you a basic overview, showed you how to create a new model, we upgraded the firmware in the Tyrannus, upgraded the bootloader, showed you how to uh, reset it just in case you mess anything up, how to change the firmware of your receivers should you need to, and uh, a few other videos. So if you haven't checked out that playlist, look in the top right of your screen now and uh, you'll find it there. So now let's talk about uh, creating switches and setting up the switches in Betaflight or Clean Flight, either one, uh, it's up to you. I prefer Betaflight, but it's going to be the same process. Anyway, press the menu button to go to your models. Uh, so here we have the model we created earlier. Now I'll hit page and go all the way over to inputs. These four inputs here are automatically created for you because. Uh, once you choose the multi rotor option, then it gives you these because these four are actually tied in with your joysticks, also known as gimbals. You have throttle, elevator, aileron, and rudder, uh, which are you know up and down and left and right on both. But we want to create some switches. So go to number five and press enter. Line name, you can name it anything you want. This switch I am creating will be an arm switch. Uh, you, by the way, you don't need an arm switch. You can arm your multi rotor with the joysticks alone, uh, but I prefer to have a switch. So uh, let's name it. By the way, uh, like I said earlier, to capitalize letters, you can hold down the enter key. Also, uh, you only get four characters when naming this, uh, so you will have to abbreviate these. Once you are done, just press the exit key, now go down, line name, you can name it if you want, I personally don't. Go to source, now press enter. If you scroll through here, you can find the uh, letter or letters for the switch, but the easier way of doing it is uh, say right now it's on switch SC, but I want this one to be my arm switch, which is SF. If you flip SF, you will see that it automatically finds it for you. Then just press enter. The weight, offset, curves, and moves, uh, modes, you don't have to change. You can actually leave everything alone. Uh, that's We're actually done. So press the exit button to go to the top of the page. Press exit again. Now go down to number six and create another switch. This one will be my flight modes, so I will just abbreviate this F mod. Uh, once again, not giving it a line name. Source, I will just press enter. Flip this switch that I want for my flight modes, which is SE. It automatically finds SE. Press enter, and we're done. Go back. Let's create another. Uh, I'll make this one for my buzzer. Okay, source. I'm just going to flip the switch. It automatically finds it. Press enter again. Exit, exit. And uh, that's all I'll do for now. I'll come back later off camera and make a few more. Uh, but you get the idea. Now, the switches you create on the input screen are not going to do anything on its own. Uh, you're basically just telling the Tyrannus, hey, uh, I want this switch to do this and I'm giving it this name. But it, it's not going to it's not going to do anything. That's why you have to press page and go over to mixer. Now mixer is what actually assigns that switch to an auxiliary channel and that is what is sent to beta flight or really to your flight controller through the receiver. Uh, once again, we have our four channels already pre-made. Go to channel five, press enter. This time when I name it, I'm going to name all of these AUX for auxiliary and then a number behind it. So this one will be AUX one. And there's a reason for this and you actually see why uh, coming up very soon once we go into beta flight. Uh, but once again, you can name it whatever you want. Now for source, you'll see that it's already set to arm, and that's because we placed arm on channel number five, 
and because we are in the mixer on channel number five, it's going to assume we want it to also be ARM, uh, which is pretty handy. So uh, weight, offset, trims, curves, everything else, once again, you do not have to touch. So press the exit button to go to the top of the screen, press exit again, go down to six, and once again, we're basically just going to name it, and that's it, everything else is set up. Okay, now I'll just go back and do it one more time. This one is going to be auxiliary three. So I will just go back and we're done. We're now ready to go into beta flight. So now I'm just going to take my USB cable and plug it into my flight controller. Now I'll go into beta flight. Make sure you have the right comm setting selected and click connect. Now, uh, if we go to the receiver tab, if you have already, you may have your receiver wired into your flight controller, but may not have set it up yet. And by that, I mean going to the configuration tab, setting this stuff up and going into ports and setting this stuff up. If you haven't done that yet, then, uh, just look through my playlist and I have multiple playlists for multiple receivers and flight controllers uh, and I show you how to not only connect it or wire it, connect it, and get your telemetry working. Um, so you may have to watch that first if you have not done that yet uh, because you can't, it's not going to work until you do that. So anyway, moving on, if I move my joysticks around you'll see the roll pitch yaw and throttle all moving on the screen if I flick my arm switch which was on auxiliary one it's working let's test the flight mode switch which was auxiliary two it's working and it's a three-way switch that's why I have three positions not like the uh, arm switch which is only two positions and my buzzer switch is a uh, three switch or a two-way switch so it's either on or off and it's working as well. Now for the other switches, I can flick all of them, but they're not going to do anything because we didn't assign those switches to an auxiliary channel. Now going on to modes. Uh, first, let's set up arm. So I will click add range. Now here is why I was saying earlier that I name all of them in the mixer, auxiliary one, two, three, four, so on, so on. It just makes life easier because that's what Betaflight automatically calls them and even though it's technically not channel number it's not channel number one technically roll is channel number one pitch is channel number two uh, but beta flight doesn't see it that way uh, so even though arm is technically channel number five I still name it channel or auxiliary one because that's just how they do it uh, but anyway I will click add range and it is on auxiliary one, so I don't have to change that. Now if I move my arm switch, you'll see this little marker moving up and down. For it to be on or off, it has to, well for it to be on, it has to be within this range, this bar. So what I'm going to do is place it to where I want it in the off position. And it doesn't matter if this switch is facing forward or to the rear. You can place this switch anywhere you want, uh, wherever you want it to be off. Uh, so, for example, I have my switch facing towards me. And this is the range for off. Now if I turn it on, it's going to be over here. So I need to move this bar to where on is within range of this bar. Now, uh, the next thing I need to say is you can adjust the width of this bar, which um, it's not going to matter for a two-way switch like this. It will matter more with uh, your flight modes, but I'll talk more about that in a second. Uh, but really all you need to know is technically this right here is on, and now it's off. Now it's on. Also, technically, this is still off, and this is still on because it's within range and now it's not so uh, I'm just going to place mine about right there so off on now going on to flight modes you actually have three different flight modes but it only shows two 
angle, which is the easiest flight mode to use. It uh, self levels for you. It doesn't let you go past a 45 degree angle. Uh, this is uh, considered like beginner mode. Horizon is kind of in the middle. It will allow you to, to do flips, but it still does some uh, self leveling. And then the hardest is going to be acro mode. But we don't see a label for acro because if you don't choose a range for either one of these, it will automatically be an acro. So if we just left these alone just the way they are right now, whenever you go fly your multi rotor, there is not going to be uh, any self leveling. It's automatically going to be an acro. So that is why I'm going to create these uh, switches for flight modes. Now my flight mode switch was on auxiliary number two, so I will choose auxiliary two. Now if I flick it, you'll see this little uh, marker moving. It is a three-way switch, that's why I also have the middle position. But I'm going to place it where I want angle to be turned on, which is right here. So I will just move this bar there. Now we can also uh, place horizon and even acro, all three on the same three position switch. To do that, I will also place this on auxiliary number two. Now if I place the switch where I want horizon to be turned on, which is in the middle, it is now in range for horizon, so horizon would be turned on. Uh, now these two, they're technically not overlapping, so it's not going to matter, but just because I'm picky, I will bring this in a little bit and bring this in just to make sure. Now if I flick the switch one more time then the marker will be all the way up here. It's not within range for angle or horizon which means both will be turned off. If they are both turned off then acro is automatically turned on and that is why there is not a uh, label for it. Now if we go to beeper which I forgot to delete but We'll do add range. I place it on auxiliary three. This is where I want it off. This is where I want it on. So leaving it turned on, I will just move this up. And there we go, off and on. Now you just want to click save. After you save it, you want to test all of your switches. And once you turn the switch on, if it's working and within range, this box will turn orange. So let's test beeper off and now on. With it on, the box is lighting up orange, so I know it's going to work. Now for the flight modes, I have it uh, in angle mode right now. Then if I flip it to the middle, angle turns off but horizon turns on. Then if I flip it again, Neither one are turned on, which means it's going to be in acro mode. Now arm. Arm is funny, and uh, it's a long explanation, but if you test arm and it does not light up, don't worry about it. That's actually normal. So, yep, there we go. It's, it's not turning orange, but like I said, it only does that for arm, and uh, I'm not going to get into that right now, but just know that if everything else is working, arm is going to work as well. And that is basically it guys, so uh, once you're done you can connect and dis disconnect your flight controller. Lost. Stick around, uh, check out the Trans Series playlist for even more uh, how-to videos just like this one, and uh, I'll see you guys soon.